Hi, Luke. Hi, Martin. I saw your video about hosting a React app on Google Cloud. Do you want to see how to deploy a Next.js app? I would love to see that. Welcome to the show, Luke. Would you tell visitors what your job is here at Google Cloud? Absolutely. I'm a developer advocate focusing on JavaScript. So that means I try to make it easier for developers, but especially JavaScript developers, to use Google Cloud. Cool. Uh, what did you do before joining Google? I previously taught at a coding boot camp teaching full stack JavaScript to new software engineers. I saw a lot of developers struggle to deploy their first applications to production. And now that I'm at Google, I get to show even more people how to get those applications deployed. That sounds like a fun job. Uh, you said you'd show us uh, how to host the Next.js app on Google Cloud. What is Next.js and how does it relate to React? Well, React is a great library for creating client-side web applications. And Next.js builds on React and adds things like server-side rendering and routing and code splitting and data fetching. But I could implement all of those things on top of React myself, right? Yes, you absolutely could if you wanted to invest that effort. But why do that when Next.js does it for you and has been tested by the JavaScript community? All right, I'm sold. Uh, how would I deploy a Next.js app uh, on Google Cloud? Well, pick Cloud Run if you are already using it or if you want a containerized solution. Now, Firebase has a product called Firebase App Hosting, which is a finely optimized deployment environment for some web frameworks like Next.js and Angular applications. If you're open to deploying your Next.js application to Firebase, pick Firebase App Hosting instead. So in this video, I'll show you how to deploy your Next.js application on Cloud Run. So Martin, would you put a link to Firebase App Hosting in the description of this video in case people are interested? Sounds good. I'll do that. Uh, now, how do I deploy a Next.js app on Cloud Run? So first, we have to create the Next.js application. We'll do that by typing npx create next app. I will go with the default options here. And success. That created a skeleton Next.js app. And I can start a local development server if I go to the apps directory and then type npm run dev. My development server is running on localhost port 3000. If I go there with my browser, I see my skeleton web app. Very nice. What happens if you make a change to the application? Yeah, let's pull these up side by side. So we've got the code here and the application here. I will change this header and save the file. And look, my browser reloaded the page automatically, and it shows the updated application. Ah, I love hot reloads. Yes, me too. And as you can see, the default application only displays some helpful links. So let's make it display a list of favorite things defined as a JavaScript array. First, I'll clear out the existing content to make room for our new application. And even though I love Tailwind, I'll remove the existing styles so that the changes are easier to see. Next, I'll add a few headings and an input field and a button so that we can add new things to our list. Now, let's add a list of our favorite things, or uh, at least my favorite things. So we'll add chocolate and JavaScript and volleyball. Now, even though we won't be using it, I'll put an add favorite things function here as a reminder to add this functionality later. So far, none of this shows up in the web page, right? Yeah, that's right. So this array only exists in the web browser's memory. And I'll add this code to display the list on the web page. I'm going to iterate through each of the favorite things with the map method. For each favorite thing, I'm going to return a list item, li, and put it on the DOM. Now I'm getting an error telling me that I need to add a key prop. So I'll add key equals thing in that opening li tag. 
Good. Uh, the user can now see the list. Uh, what does it look like in action? Well, let's try adding something to the list. So I'm going to try to add hanging out with Martin to the list. And when I click the button, Oh, nothing happens. You don't want to hang out with me. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. Uh, I didn't see you add any functionality to that button, huh? Yes, of course I want to hang out with you, Martin. This is a functionality issue. So for this, we need to add a few use state hooks. So these allow us to make and track changes to variables in React. And remember, Next.js is built on top of React. So anything we can do in React, we can do in Next.js. The variable we're going to create is new favorite thing. And the function we use to change the variable is going to be set new favorite thing. So I might not be a React expert, but I'm guessing that the red error there is bad. <laughs> Very perceptive, yes. So use state is a special React hook. So I need to import it. I'm going to click add import from React. And now you can see it at the top of the file. But now I see a new error. Yes, Next.js has server components and client components. Now that we are using the use state hook, we have to mark this one as a client component. We will do that by adding use client to the top of our file. Now we can have our application respond to user interactions on the client. So we'll add a value to our input that reflects the new favorite thing and on change that sets the value to whatever was just entered. So it seems like uh, you've done a lot of work uh, to get the input box working again. Yeah, that's fair. So let's move this list into another use state hook so that we can make changes to that as well. We're going to create favorite things and set favorite things and set it equal to a new use state hook. The default value goes in the parentheses, so let's move our starting array from above down here. And now we can add something to the list? Uh, almost, almost. So let's add a few more lines of code to finally solve the problem we started with. All we need to do now is to create a function that adds things to the new array. So if you're unfamiliar with this syntax, just know that this adds the new favorite thing to the end of the array. Then we are going to set the value of new favorite thing to an empty string to clear out the input value. Now that the function exists, we can go back to our button and say, on click, run that add thing function that we've created. And now, Martin, now is when we can officially add talking with Martin to my list of favorite things. Aha, excellent. Uh, so it's working on your machine, Luke. Uh, can you share the link with me? Well, it's working on my machine, but right now it's only working on my machine at localhost 3000. So to share it with you, I'll need to deploy this application to the cloud. So let's do that. First, I need to create a Google Cloud project. I'll do that by going to console.cloud.google.com. Then I click here to create a new project and link it to a billing account. It will take a minute. So now that you have a project, you can deploy your application from the command line, right? With the gcloud command? You're absolutely right. So I could just run the command gcloud run deploy, but I prefer to set up continuous deployment for my code repository instead. That way, I don't have to manually deploy new versions of my app every time I update the code. Instead, whenever I check in new code, it's deployed automatically to my Google Cloud project so that I can test it. Ah, sounds useful. I believe Cloud Run makes that easy. Yes, it does. So Cloud Run makes that very easy. I'll head over to Cloud Run in the console. Then I'll create a new Cloud Run service. Then I'll connect it with my code repository over here. Now I'm going to be using build packs, which essentially says that cloud build should just figure it out for me. The only other setting I need to change is that I want to allow unauthenticated invocations. Now I know that sounds a little scary, but it just means that we will allow anyone to visit my website. All right, pretty easy. And give it a few minutes for this first deployment. 
And now if I click this link, there is my Next.js app running in the cloud. And I can even add items to the list just like we did when we were running on localhost 3000. Very good. The application is in the cloud, so I can use it from my computer too. And there it is. Uh, but look, I got the default list of items. Uh, the item you'd added isn't there. That's right. And if I refresh, I see the same thing that you're seeing. That's because the code that handles the list runs in the web browser itself. So let's move that code to the server so we can look at the same list. Mm -hmm. And now it all works? Yes, yes, it finally does. And then I commit the code to source control. This will be automatically deployed to Cloud Run. So let's give it a minute. And it looks like the new version has been deployed. So let's try it out. The web app seems to be working. Let me add a new item. Now open the web app in your browser, Martin. Okay, we'll do. Look, uh, there's the list of default items, uh, plus the new item you just entered. This proves that the list handling code is running on the server, so the list is shared between the two of us. And that's it. Now, for a production service, I wouldn't store data just in memory like we've done in this example. I would use a database like Firestore or Cloud SQL, but this example app shows that it's easy to run server-side code in Cloud Run if you're used to Next.js. All right, excellent. Thank you for showing this to us, Luke. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for Luke or me, please add a comment below. Also, let me know if there are other serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time.